the Lord was calling young Jeremiah to be his prophet. And he was to speak the words that God would give him in spite of the fact that they would not be accepted by the, his audience. But this was the Lord's agenda for Jeremiah the prophet. Our first reading, which will also serve as our sermon text this morning, is recorded in the Old Testament book of Jeremiah, chapter 1, verses 4 through 10. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. See, Today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. The word of the Lord. Grace and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. As I mentioned before, the Word of God that we're going to look at this morning is our first reading from the Old Testament book of Jeremiah, chapter 1, verses 4 through 10. And I invite you to uh, refresh uh, your minds of what is written there by referring to what is printed in the bulletin. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, are you a people pleaser? How can you tell? Well, one big tell is that people pleaser never wants anyone to get mad at him or to get upset with him. And for that reason, when something needs to be said to correct what one is doing wrong or to warn one about some danger that they are heading into, a people pleaser won't say what needs to be said, thinking, well, that will get them mad at me. Or they might, that might drive them away from me. Plus, if you do an online search about people pleasers, you will find that they tend to do all they can to please others while ignoring their own needs. Now, I'm going to let you know that this Old Testament reading from Jeremiah today is an excellent sermon text for the ordination and installation of a young new pastor. But we already did that half a year ago when I was here last to preach. And at that time, I happened to use a good portion of our second lesson today from 2 Timothy. Besides that, my son isn't even here. And it's not my plan to direct this sermon only to that older, retired pastor in the back. No, I am directing this sermon to all of you here this morning to give you that great assurance of the Lord's guidance, direction, help, presence, protection, and power in your life. Still, you may be thinking, well, what do these words from Jeremiah have to say to me? After all, I'm not a prophet or a pastor or a preacher. But let me ask you this. 
How many times have you had opportunities to talk to someone about what the Bible says, about what God's holy will is, about God's saving love for people in Christ? How many opportunities have you had or continue to have to speak for the Lord to your children or to other relatives, to your co-worker, to your neighbor, to that special friend? And what did you do with those opportunities? Speak for the Lord? Or shy away from that as a people pleaser? You see, being a people pleaser in this case is not only trying to keep people happy with you while ignoring your own needs. Even more, it is ignoring God's agenda for you and me. His agenda for people to hear what they need to hear from Him. And that is why, based on the words of our reading today, I want you to think about this question. What are your excuses for not speaking for the Lord? Three excuses come to mind based on this section of God's Word. One, He doesn't know me all that well. Two, I'm not ready. And three, I don't know what to say. But what does God in His Word tell you about those excuses? Now, this reading is the account of the Lord calling young Jeremiah to be his prophet. And the Lord immediately lets Jeremiah know that this was his plan for Jeremiah for a long time. This was the word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. I'm going to admit something to you. I grew up watching the old Looney Tunes, Bugs Bunny cartoons. And I remember many times when facing challenges from characters like Elmer Fudd and Yosemite Sam, Bugs would say, he don't know me very well, do he? Does that sound like your excuse, though? Are you thinking, hey, if the Lord gives me this opportunity to speak for him, he doesn't know me very well. If he did, he would know that in these situations I get nervous. I get flustered, I can't think straight, my mouth gets dry, and I can't speak. I'm not made for this. Really? What does the Lord, your Creator, tell you in His Word? He says that He knew you way before you were born. St. Paul, in his letter to the Romans, wrote this about all believers. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed into the likeness of his Son. God made you, like the psalm writer proclaimed, for you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Listen to what the Lord said to Moses when Moses had a similar excuse. 
Moses said to the Lord, O Lord, I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. The Lord said to him, Who gave man his mouth? Who makes him deaf or mute? Who gives him sight or makes him blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go. I will help you to speak and will teach you what to say. Each one of us uses our God-given mouth to speak about all sorts of other things, right? Why don't we use it to speak for the Lord? Maybe God didn't make you for the specific purpose of being a full-time public minister. And yet, when it comes to those opportunities to speak for the Lord, God himself gave them to you. Paul wrote to the Ephesians, For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God has prepared in advance for us to do. So if this is your excuse, that you can't speak for the Lord because He doesn't know you very well, my friends, let me remind you of this. The Lord knows you better than you know you. He is the one who made you. He knows you inside and out. With Super Bowl Sunday coming up two weeks from now, I I think back to Super Bowl 43 when the Pittsburgh Steelers scored the winning touchdown with 35 seconds left to go in the game to defeat the Arizona Cardinals. At the post-game press conference, quarterback Ben Roethlisberger the now-retired Ben Roethlisberger, made this statement, we are made for that. Likewise, when the Lord gives you the opportunity to speak to Him, to speak for Him to your child, or to your friend, or even to a stranger, He does so not because you are a people pleaser, but because he made you for that. Or do you have another excuse? I'm not ready. Well, that was Jeremiah's excuse in the only words that he spoke in today's reading. Alas, sovereign Lord, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. In other words, Jeremiah figured that he had not had enough time yet to train for this public speaking, and he had not had enough time yet to experience being one who speaks for the Lord. I'm not ready yet, was Jeremiah's excuse. But realize that with that excuse... Jeremiah was putting his trust in his own abilities and experience. Listen again to the Lord's answer to him. Do not say, I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them. For I am with you and will rescue you declares the Lord. There was the assurance of the Lord's guidance and direction for Jeremiah. There was the assurance of the Lord's presence and protection for Jeremiah. In short, the Lord told Jeremiah, don't put your trust in yourself. Be ready by putting your trust in in me. Speakers for the Lord don't always have time to prepare. 
you might call to mind the words that the Lord Jesus spoke to his disciples, but when they arrest you, do not worry about what to say or how to say it. At that time, you will be given what to say. For it will not be you speaking, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. That is the Lord's help for his speakers. Sure, there is a time to train, and training to speak for the Lord is a good thing. But at all times, whether you are ready or not, it's time to trust in the Lord and His help. If your excuse for not speaking for the Lord is this, I'm not ready, then I urge you, first of all, to re repent of your lack of trust in the Lord. People pleasers lack that trust. When they are only striving to keep people happy with them and are afraid of people rejecting them. So I also encourage you to pray. Pray that the Lord strengthens your faith. Pray that he strengthens your trust in him and his help for you. Pray that he strengthens your assurance that he is always with you to guide you, to protect you, and to give you what to say with power. For here comes the biggest, most often used excuse, I don't know what to say. The Lord made it visibly plain to Jeremiah what he was to say. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. We see in the rest of this book how Jeremiah proclaimed the words that the Lord put in his mouth. In his ministry, Jeremiah would primarily proclaim God's law, emphasized in those four phrases, to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow. For the Lord had Jeremiah proclaim the Lord's last warning. To the people of Judah, that because of their constant idolatry and refusal to turn back to the Lord, the Lord was going to send them into exile to Babylon. But Jeremiah would also preach God's gospel, emphasized by those last two phrases to build and to plant. For within those huge sections of law also came some beautiful gospel promises. Jeremiah would prophesy about the coming of the Savior. How the Lord would raise up to David a righteous branch who would be called the Lord our righteousness. And based on that promised one, Jeremiah would also prophesy that the Lord would make a new covenant. I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. Now the Lord has put his word in us, you and me. He put in us his law, proclaiming how we, like all people, have disobeyed him, have failed to trust him, have made excuses not to speak for him, all, for all of which we deserve his just punishment. 
but he has also put in us his gospel, proclaiming that his son Jesus came to live that perfect life for you and to suffer the punishment for all your sins with his death on the cross. Jesus' resurrection from the dead is the assurance that God offers the forgiveness of sins and eternal life to all people, including you. Now that's good news for you, isn't it? It's also good news for those other people around you in your life. So if your excuse for not speaking for the Lord is, I don't know what to say, let me ask you this. Are you listening when you come here to church? Here is where the Lord puts his words, not only in your heart, but also in your mouth. And by the way, I'm afraid that this is one excuse people have for not coming to church. So that they could say, well, I don't know what to say. So that they don't really have to get involved. But on the other hand, this is still good news for you too, right? You still need to hear the forgiveness of sins and the eternal life that God assures to you through your Savior, Jesus Christ. And also let me ask you, do you come to Bible classes? Are you reading the Bible at home? Those are other ways that the Lord puts His words in you. When it comes right down to it, people pleasers like these three and all other excuses, for they know that God's law condemns the sinful thoughts, words, actions, and lives of all people, and that God, God's gospel points them to their only Savior from sin. But people pleasers also know that these words of God get people upset and mad at them because they don't like to have their sins pointed out or to be told that they are helpless to please God on their own, or to be convinced that they really need a Savior. My friends, this is still God's agenda. This is what He uncovers for us, so that we know the truths of God that people need to hear. Don't come up with excuses when those opportunities to speak for the Lord come into your life. Rather, trust in the Lord's direction, guidance, help, presence, protection, and power for you to speak for Him. Remember, it's not about whether they are pleased with you or not. Instead, it's all about what they need to hear for their eternal salvation. Amen.